your hand up if you've seen this. Put your hand up if you've seen Hawkeye. It might not be very many. Okay, I was relying on Ben because Ben's just going to come and explain a little bit about it. So. <laughs> So basically, Hawkeye is a guy from Marvel who basically is like a like a professional with like a bow and arrow. He's got like different types of arrows, which I won't go into because there's like thousands. Well, he has a family. Like I, I don't really know how to. Oh, he's part of the Avengers. Which is a group of superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, fine. that's it. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, so whether you agree with that or not, some people have strong opinions on all these things, but I enjoy it. I haven't been convicted yet, so don't, you know, so don't come at me with that, okay? <laughs> We've all got different opinions, yeah? We're on different walks, and at the moment, you know, it is going down a bit of a different path, but anyway. I enjoyed Hulk, Hawkeye, it was good. <laughs> so there was a moment when he was washing up after he had been fighting and it really struck me how he still had time to clean up and how that mattered. So I, I know I told you it's silly, it's little things. So this, out of all, all of that series, for, for me the, the standing out bit, I loved it as, as it was. But God really spoke to me about how this guy just went out and saved the day if you like, and then he, he came home and he put the tea towel on his shoulder and he washed up. And for me, it just spoke to me. It just spoke to me um, about how, yeah, I just, anyway, I'm going to go and carry on because I'll just keep going on. Hang on. <laughs> so it made me think of behind the scenes of the action of miracles. For example, after Jesus turned water into wine and those pots would have had needed to be washed up. And can you imagine cleaning them up after knowing what happened to them? It's just these little things. It's really kind of, I, it kind of takes me to these places. And I, I can't tell you why, but it just does. And, and after all the feasts that they had together, they would have had been so much to do after that. There would have been so much. Like Jesus loved to have feasts. He loved all of that. There had been a lot of food and a lot of plates to wash up, a lot of stuff to do. And it just made me think of like even when Jesus would have been going out doing all these miracles and there would have still needed cleaning to do. And it just really spoke to me and that it just made me think of these things. And then in this church, there's always washing up to do because there is so much going on, which is great. And the same person who prayed for a miracle also went to go and wash up in, in the kitchen, which to me, that's quite powerful. And that is who our God is and that's who we are as well so it, it was just an example so I wanted my glamorous assistant to come up here wherever he is give him a big round of applause <laughs> so I'm not sure Jamie do you wash up here sure. okay <laughs> so <laughs> this is washing up liquid and this is a sponge so can you wash up please Thank you very much. Well, it's probably cold now because I did it a while ago. But <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to give you a visual. You keep going, that's it. Wash it up. Keep it going. What does that one say, Jamie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so... There's a bowl and washing up liquid, and everyone can do it. <laughs> I know a lot of you are grateful for that plug today. So, and we've got some new cups, haven't we, Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. So, and everyone's responsible for washing them up, aren't they? Yeah. There we go. I thought I'd add that one in there as well. That was just a little add on. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Glamour, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then I started thinking about God and fighting our battles for us that we don't see. So behind the scenes, like, you don't often see people in the kitchen. It's quite hidden. And 
and also just like around us how God is protecting us from dangerous things as well like we probably a lot of us here can witness or say that there's been times that probably we shouldn't be here um, due to whatever things that might be um, but I do believe God is there like there is moments where we feel like that could have been worse yeah that could have been worse obviously we still go through things but I was saying I work at a nursery and um, this little boy was going around on this it's like a it's a, it's a car but you use your legs with you know like this and um, he was in it and he was trying to get up this step and he was like really trying to kept on going backwards and then get trying to get up this step but it just he just kept getting stuck so I just kind of went over and just like lifted him up and then he went but he didn't even know I did it he just was like oh and it, that's how it's like it's kind of that's how God does it it's like behind the scenes but he's like okay so there's so many moments I think God does so much that we don't know and don't see and and also washing up after us as well like he washed he washes up our, our mess isn't he um, when we come to him and yeah I just thought it's quite powerful like behind how much things are going on behind the scenes that we do and we don't need the glory for it but also how much more God does but doesn't get the glory for it as well um, which is incredible how amazing he is isn't it and yeah for us as his creation uh, he does so much for us that we haven't seen from creating us the human race for us as a nation the church and for us as individuals his children the thought of God with a bow and arrow like Hawkeye then but then with a tea towel over his shoulder really spoke to me about how about who my God is um, about how he has he is powerful enough to destroy he is powerful enough to do whatever he likes but yet yeah, he's still got that time to to clean us up as well sorry I just went off on one then um, I feel in all of his power and thankful for his grace I see him as a king but yet as a servant being reminded about Jesus washing away our sins and that we are the works of his hands um, it just it's, it just amazes me and I know it might be simple to you guys like you you might you might have more in-depth things going on with your walk but sometimes for me the simple things I need reminding on um, because we take it for granted so much I think we take it so much for granted I've been a Christian 20 years now and I, I, I was saying to Sats earlier that I feel like I should know so much more like biblically like have biblical knowledge and so much there but really honestly I can say that I've grown in wisdom um, and I've grown in different things as well so it's just like what you measure your walk with God to be doesn't it it's personal some of it is um, Bible knowledge and but it's how it connects to your life as well um, it's just not it's not just knowledge is it God is not just just want knowledge We're a bit like what Ben was saying about wisdom and and how we need that so much in our walk with God and how he can teach us so much so yeah so that's how it all started um, that process I know it doesn't sound like much but it just I felt God wanted me to sh wanted to share that with you today about he is he is mighty but he serves us as well just like a good king should and everything that's going on at the moment we don't know if we can trust the the next step we don't know uh, it's not in our hands um, but we do serve the king of kings and and he is at our reach um, so we can trust him and go to him with these things as well and pray to him about our leaders uh, it's really important to pray about the next things and trusting that it's in God's hands So it leads me on to purpose and going back to that verse again. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. So it's just understanding what our purpose is. Why does he clean us up through Jesus? Why, what's the point of him creating us? You know, it's like sometimes I have, even though walking so long, 
you think you, you're settled in your in your walk and you think, oh, I know where I belong, I know this and that. Being part of an amazing church helps because everyone's really encouraging. But sometimes you still get these little questions like, why did you create us? You know, what, why, you know, yeah, you died on the cross for our sins, but why, you know, what, what is the real reason? We know it's to connect to the Father, but even that, why do you want us to connect to the Father? What's the purpose with that? So it's like, I don't know about you, but it is a constant learning curve with God. And we go through different things and we question those things, don't we? We're like, well, if you are in my life, why has this happened? Um, but like Miranda said, it's about flipping that idea. She said at home group about why does God give us good things? I thought that was really powerful. It's like understanding that for ourselves, isn't it? Like we, we question why bad things happen to us, but it's like actually thinking why do good things happen to us, which is what Miranda said, which is it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't deserve anything. I deserve nothing. But it still makes you question your purpose and, and why God even began in the first place. Why you bother? But in Ephesians 2, verse 10, it says, sorry, I... Am I going too fast with the scripture? Ephesians 2, verse 10, and then I'll wait. <laughs> it's easy for me because I got it already. It's written down, but I know it takes a bit longer. <laughs> For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance to do. Again, it's about him and what he does. He he reaches and he touches us, but we are his handiwork. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, so to do good works, which God prepared for us to do in advance. So he's already prepared things for us to do. Whatever that is, is, is down to you and God to find out and, and to just work through. Because sometimes we think it's God and it's not. But it's all a learning curve with God, isn't it? To find our purpose. And sometimes our purpose can be the simplest things as well. It doesn't have to be, be like these mountaintop moments all the time. It can be just you're walking into... Um, Anything at work, you know, work can be quite tough. I find that quite difficult to be myself completely because if I really talk to to people about what I believe, I don't know, you know, it's it's around children. I'm at a nursery anyway, so, um, you know, the kids are there and and that has a purpose in itself because they're the next generation. But, um, yeah, sometimes you can't be your, your full self with people, can you? And that's difficult. And then you think, well, what's my purpose in it if I can't uh, do certain things? Um, but he then teaches us that the simplicity of our purpose as well is being there for someone without words, which is dif- I find difficult because I always want to fix problems. But sitting there with someone or, yeah, just making someone a cup of tea or something like that. Um, sometimes God sees value in all of those things. So it's just reminding ourselves of that purpose as well. And Isaiah 64, verse 8. Yet you, Lord... Oh, sorry. (laughs) Isaiah 64, verse 8. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay... You are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Yeah, that gets me on to the next part of it. So it starts, it's all about God's hands on our life and how he's worked things through us. And we all know that it's like a that visual of the potter molding us. And yeah, it's a really powerful image because it's, it's messy and it's, you know, it doesn't always look like it's not the finished article, it's not the finished thing, it's not, it's, 
God is molding us and shaping us. Um, yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> We're just here, here the outside. Yeah, so it's just reminding ourselves that we are just to keep soft and, yeah, to, sorry, I'm just questioning whether to go somewhere because I've been praying about God, if he, which way, which direction he wants to go after this. Okay, so I'm going to read out Jeremiah 18, verse 4. <laughs> Kids, love them. <laughs> so Jeremiah 18, verse 4. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hand. And this is about Israel. Um, but I felt God wanted it to be about you individually, since all things came from there. Uh, anyway, I believe that God speaks to us individually too through these things. Um, and it's just about it going all, it looked like it was going wrong for the potter. It was all kind of, it didn't misshaped, but yet he, God can choose to either reshape it or not make it at all. He has that power. He is God. He is the creator, isn't he? He has the power to just dis discard it or recreate it. So if you're here today, and you're created for a purpose. Does it matter what you think of yourself? You're here because God wants you to be here. And it made me think, because it's about Israel, it made me think of our nation. And it made me think of how God can change his mind on things as well. As what, if you read more of that in a, in a minute, because I'm going to play a song. And if you just want to read through that, um, if that's where your heart leads. Um, to think of our nation and where we've come from and the, where the Queen's faith has taken us. Uh, but it goes back further than that, people that travelled to England to, um, to preach the gospel. And that's why our nation is saved, because people from Israel spread it around the world. That is why we're saved, isn't it? And it's just reminding, it just reminded me of like what, where we're at as a nation as well. So if, if, you, if God speak, is God speaking to you individually or are your heart into where things are going? Um, he's very personal like that. So I just wanted to make sure that if you aren't feeling like it's for you individually, this scripture uh, about being shaped and formed, it's a, maybe you need to pray about the nation of where it's going. Um, both of them are, are important in his eyes. The world and you as an individual is just as important to him. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to play a song. I wasn't sure to dance or not because I just wasn't sure where it was going to go. And I wanted to just be led by God today. Um, so I'm going to do a visual with the song. But if you don't want to look, it's not a problem. You just close your eyes, listen to the song. Let him do what he wants to do, Where what you've already been doing with this morning. Letting God do a work on you. But if your heart is in where the nation's going as well, read through Jeremiah 18 um, to just pray into that while the song's going on. Yeah. So I just wanted it to cater for everybody um, because I felt like if this scripture is about Israel and how much he cared about Israel, and we know that Israel is, is an important place to God, but he cares about our nation as well. So... Yeah, so just think about that when the song's on. But if it is just about you and you just want God to speak to you through this song, then continue to watch um, or just close your eyes. Okay? hope that makes sense.
What's this song? It's quite an old song, but it's powerful. Um, it goes on to, it made me think of the vessels of honor, which we did at our First Ladies Day, I believe. That was the first theme, uh, vessels of honor. And when you see these finished articles of what the potter would have done, it, I feel like we've never really actually talked about that. It's been about being the clay, being molded. Um, but I don't know about you, but then we are meant to be formed into something. We're meant to the next step um, when it's the process of what we're meant to be. So it goes back to the purpose and how it starts off as the clay. And obviously the, the potter's hand is always working. And it just made me think how we're all, we are all different. We are different shapes, sizes. We are different inside. Um, we are different walks. And we have different purposes. Um, just like the things that the, the potter makes. Uh, it, it's all different things for different reasons. And it just made me think of when we have formed and we've been in, you know, we've hardened and We've been made to be what we're meant to be, which some of us have, have had that. Like if you've walked with God a long time, you do know a bit more about yourself and what your purpose is um, if you've been walking with him longer. And maybe you're set in your ways as well. Like he, I know that I can be like that at times where you know who you are and sometimes you can be a bit hardened and, and, and just set there as well. So you're set in what God's purpose is for you. Um, so when it's saying, use me and fill me, like I was showing with the water, um, we can only hold the water once it's hardened. We can only hold God's presence. So he's done the work, which we know he's done a lot of the work and he's done a lot of the molding and that takes, and that was really difficult to do as well. Um, <laughs> I thought I'm not gonna be able to make anything out of that because it's just too difficult. And it just shows you how the process is. I just wanted to point out how difficult that process is and, and how long it can take to make beautiful things as well out of just a lump of clay. I was going to get you to turn to each other and say, what a lump, but I thought I better not. <laughs> because I thought, I was just trying to think of, I think I'm hilarious, but my kids say that I'm not. So I think, I <laughs> and then the other thing I, I, I thought, um, <laughs> I'm going to say a joke and I, my kids are going to tell me off. But I was thinking, I was trying to find the pot earlier and I was thinking, oh no, I've lost the pot. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. My sense of humor is really silly and I just think my jokes are the best, but yeah, they're not. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we're all different and unique, aren't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and then it, it just made me think of like, these are lovely. Um, and smooth and they've been washed up so they can be reused we can be cleansed by jesus so oh, the batteries go in is it no okay yeah so it's, i just made me think of the, the the finished piece of the potter um and then the use that it has and the use that we have had we get cleaned we sin and then we you know we have to come to jesus again we learn from our mistakes hopefully then we do something, we need clean. It's like a process, isn't it? Like the washing up gets used. You know, that's how I, I kept on thinking about. I kept on thinking like, yeah, we are made for a purpose, but yet we still, you know, and those purposes, um, sometimes we can help people and get into a bit of a tangle with a good heart. But then we, you know, then we go down a certain route and we've got to be careful, haven't you? Um, yeah, you've got to look after yourself. We have, all have different triggers and different things that, make us go down different paths. Um, I don't know why I brought that up. I wasn't meant to say that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it just made me think of the finished piece. And when we're hardened and we're, we're created to, to do something, to present something, to be a work of art, to be, it could be anything that um, the potter makes. Um, and some of it is really beautiful and some of it is um, just made for the purpose that it's made for, which is fine as well. All of it is great. And it just made me think of something that you've owned for a long time that's um, worn out and shattered. Like you might have your favorite 
um, pottery piece or, or something that you have and it's just worn out and shattered and it's just chipping away and it's uh, broken and I thought, does it really have purpose anymore? Like, can something, what does that mean then after? Because we, got, we talked about the molding, we talked about the shaping and then the, the nice bit at the end, but what about when it starts to crumble or what about when it starts to yeah, crack and, and you can't put the water in it anymore. So that made me just really think of how, like how I know that we can be used even if we're broken. And it was just a real picture for me because I, 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 I've always known about the potter and the clay, the process that he does keep molding us. But I felt God wanted to then bring it together into are we still worth it if we're broken, if we're not maybe as connected as we once were or maybe as innocent as we once were or, you know, different things have chipped away parts of who we were called to be. And But God sees all of that. So it's like, yeah, for me, it just really spoke to me about um, the beauty and the brokenness. We sing about all these things, beauty and brokenness, uh, gracefully broken, um, yeah, putting us back together. But what does that mean in this terms of once being the clay, once having that purpose? And um, I found a poem online. I can't take any credit for it because I did not do it at all. Um, and I don't know if Margie did one, so I just found one online um, about... It's called Cracked Pot, which I thought was quite funny as well, but... <laughs> Cracked pot. This clay pot really leaks just to show how I am so weak. But his spirit fills me up as by his word I daily sup. I write not from low self esteem, but for what comes my, from my king. I am the Lord's own cracked pot because he's become my greatest law. He is the Lord God most high. His grace has brought me oh so nigh. He is the one. For which I live, his spirit cleansed like a sieve. I hold within this vessel treasure, all that's of the Lord's good measure. I glorify him, spite my weakness, as his power in me is witness. To show him off is my aim, his love in me forever reigns. His love is my great compulsion, for he is my own great salvation. I write not from low self esteem. But for what, God, what, for what comes from my king, I am the Lord's own crackpot because he's become my greatest law. He is the Lord, God most high. His grace has brought me oh so nigh. He is the one for which I live. His spirit cleansed like a sieve. I thought that was, I didn't expect to find a poem like that online. Um, and it spoke to me. And there was also, I, I saw a picture pop up one day uh, of a bucket that has, like, you know, when it, when it breaks, but it, it still closes. It's like a, a crack, but it's, it's still, it's not, like, um, open. And it showed the bucket on the floor next to, on the grass, and it was being filled by the rain. And it was still held enough water for itself, but it, it slowly leaked the water, and around it grew loads of life. And again, that spoke to me about, are we still at use when we're broken? Do we still have, like when life's been harsh, you know, and then God, is, God can still fill you, and he can still use you, and you still have purpose, even in that brokenness. So it just made me think of, and there is another one that says um, this man was carrying um, two pots, like going to the well, backwards and forwards to the well. And, and one of his, the pots had a crack in it, very, a very small crack. And, but he wanted to keep it because it was special to him. And when he went to go and fill up with water, there was a leak all the way back down the path. And someone said to him, why don't you change that vessel? Why don't you get a better one or a you know, a new one. And he said, I don't want to because look at all the growth that's happened along that path. So actually, sometimes 
what we don't see is that when we boast in our weakness, it can actually help others. When we acknowledge that we're broken sometimes, it can then make someone think, and God still uses you? And then you think, oh, so I can be still used, you know? So don't underestimate the power of God. Um, yeah, it just spoke to me, because I've always heard of the, the, the potter and the clay, and it just made me think of, yeah, all of those other bits, and I felt someone here today needs to know that. It doesn't matter if you're broken. It really doesn't matter. Like, you don't have to um, fix, like, as in you don't have to put something over it to to make God not use you. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm saying it right. I hope that makes sense. Um, but there's also another thing that um, I came across, which is, oh, I don't know if I'm going to say it right. Um, it's kintsugi. Have you heard of that? It's a Japanese art. Has anyone heard of this? Kintsugi? So I came across it a couple of years ago. My mum was talking about it because she, she loves pottery and stuff like that. And um, I was asking her what it meant, and because she's she got a lot of plate collections, whatever reason that is, um, like she likes to display them. It's like you know that it's, there's some really beautiful plates out there, which I kind of get now, the older I get. But when I was a kid, I was like, why do you put plates on the wall? You know, what's that about? But um, <laughs> but I do, I see it. It is a form of art. It is a is an art form in itself because they value. Um, whatever time and effort that that potter has taken to put the art form into it, but then yeah, one of her plate, plates, uh, one of her plates broke, and then she told me about this, and um, this is actually for her birthday, but um, I don't know if she's watching in. Sorry about that if I've spoiled that. Um, but yeah, so but it's made it, it's like glue, so it's a repairing kit, but it makes something that's broken and turns it into an art piece. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And talking about brokenness, like you can be, and this is something that's shattered as well. It can also be put back together. And it says on the back, it says, uh, it teaches us to embrace and celebrate imperfection. And I thought, wow, <laughs> that's really powerful. And I don't know the root of the Japanese art mind, so don't take me up on that if there's some sort of root that's not good. I don't know. But the art form in itself, is amazing and the fact that it's gold as well so you're not hiding it he's not putting see-through glue on it to make it look like there's no imperfections he actually then pours gold into that and he shows the work of art through that and that, I can just see God all over that. I can see Jesus all over that and especially with the gold and that, that really spoke to me as well because it started to all tie together because I thought where's washing up with Hawkeye gonna go for a message and I was like I don't really understand and you were probably thinking the same thing but through that whole process <laughs> sorry uh, through that whole process um, <laughs> yeah through that whole process um, this was the the bit that really got me I thought yeah we've been molded we've been shaped we've a lot of us have done things over the time with God and, and it's fulfilled its purpose. And then there's been times when we've been broken. But he's transformed us into a piece of art. <laughs> That's mind-blowing. <laughs> I just think it's incredible. And I've also got something here that is, um, you can paint. So it's like um, ceramic. So it goes on glass and ceramics and you can actually paint on, on things like that. And... Um, and make it into an art piece. So he can also like, say if you've done lots of work and you've just been playing, you've been doing your purpose and it's all been good, like he said about um, doing good works. We've done our good, we've done good works over the years. We've done good things. But then there's some, he can also transform us into that painting, that artwork on a, on a plate that I saw on my mum's wall there, there's on display. Maybe you've done your purpose. Maybe they can be transformed into something that, glorifies him in a different way so it, all of this just spoke to me through 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 all of that and I never thought when I was a kid I would be celebrating plates on a wall but <laughs> here we are but 
it just really spoke to me that there really is beauty in brokenness, as long, obviously, that Jesus is the center of it all. Because otherwise, it's for nothing, isn't it? Our brokenness is just broken, and then it's scattered, and then it's done. Which brings me on to another thing. Can you imagine something else can come from that? In our garden, we live in a very old house, and in the garden there's scattered pottery and I don't know the real reason. Does anyone know why there's broken bits of pottery around in old gardens? Does anyone know history? Anyone know that? No, because I don't know if it's something to do with the ground that needed. I don't know if it's from the war, from, you know, I don't really know if there's a reason for it to be there or it's just from the explosions that have caused that and it's scattered. So in the garden, I collected, because I was on this journey, this is what happens, God speaks to me, and then it starts to go to these visual things, and then I start to think, and then I saw this broken pottery around the garden, I collected it all, and I felt, it was like from the past, it was like broken pieces from the past, um, things that have just been scattered, and I was thinking, is there, is there beauty in that, if it's, no, there's not one complete thing? It's all scattered. And then as I started to pick up the pieces, I saw some with really lovely little patterns on it. And then I started to make my own artwork with it. I was going to bring it, but I'm a bit embarrassed about it because it looks a bit weird. Um, so I stuck it all the way around the edge of a frame um, with, yeah, it's just kind of like broken pieces all the way around. And I thought, and then I felt God was saying that we can learn from the past as well. So we can learn from broken things we can learn from that and then turn it into our own story as well so things that maybe seemed quite dark in the past maybe seemed quite empty and and unused um I felt like either he's teaching us to not it's just coming to me now I think it's teaching us to just be careful and make sure that we don't get left scattered and I know that sounds a bit harsh and I feel a bit mean saying that, but it's making sure if Jesus isn't the center of it all, then he can't bring those pieces back together. He wants to, but he, he can't. It just That just came to me then. Yeah, sorry. So make sure that Jesus is the center because otherwise we can be broken. But what else... If, if Jesus isn't there, how can he put those bits back together? How can we fulfill purpose if our creator can't even use us because we don't want him? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's just reminded, just be reminded why we're here, why we, people don't care. People, there's some people that do deny Jesus. They don't want to know. There is people there that are so hard-hearted that they don't want to know, but that's not in our hands. That's between them and God, and we can just pray. We've got the power of prayer. But let's just remind ourselves that we don't want to be those broken, scattered pieces with no purpose. Yeah, wow. Thank you, Lord. And Job 23, verse 10, which is what we spoke, we've been learning a lot about Job in our home group. And this really spoke to a few of us. But he knows the way that I take when he has tested me. I will come forth as gold. Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Job. You know, it's been amazing to learn about him and get deeper with that. But wow. Wow. For, yeah, but he knows the way that I take when he has tested me. I will come forth as gold. To keep pressing on. You're broken, but you've still got your pieces. Let him do that. If you're completely broken, just think of that gold glue that's sticking the pieces back together. You might be in this process still, which is fine. And that's another thing that I was... And I say, you might still be in the, in the molding, and that's all fine. We're all on different journeys and different walks. You might still be here, and that's fine. Don't rush the process. 
Let's carry on. Whatever is speaking to you, if you feel like you're still here and it's still like you don't really know, you might be here and you might have needed cleaning today and we all can always come back to Jesus. So great. He's so gracious to us. You might be doing your, fulfilling your purpose as God's called you and that's good too. All of it's good. And then you might also be going through this process where you're broken and, and God is putting back the pieces. And again, that takes time. I mean, I haven't given it a go yet, but it looks difficult. And that takes time. God takes his time with us because he knows, doesn't he? And also you might be in a process of something new. You've, you've done a lot of the same things and, and you want something new and it's okay to say, God, actually, what's, what's next? What's the new thing? And it could be that you're getting painted and color and you just don't know. I can't say that for you. Only you guys know what's going on um, for you individually. But also, like I was saying before, as a nation, um, yeah, God is in control. <laughs>